when we build robots, we're actually trying to create artificial sensing and artificial actuation or motion systems. And so you can imagine that taking pieces of this and using it to augment devices that assist people who have sensory motor impairments. These artificial ways of doing this that we've developed for robots is something that could be useful. Ideally, in, in the future, it would be that these, these machines were, were filling sort of a hole that, it, that is left by their impairment in a way that is very easy for them to use and is that they're able to customize on their own. So this robot that we're first working with is an approximation to a wheelchair. What you normally have is that the user provides some sort of input and this is converted to motor commands for the actual wheelchair wheels. And that's how a user can operate manually a powered wheelchair. Now what we're doing with this wheelchair and what some other people have done as well is to add sensors to it so that the wheelchair is now able to detect other aspects of its external environment. So you saw that we had ultrasonic sensors, we have the Microsoft Connect, we have IR sensors, so we're able to detect obstacles and things like that. And what we do then is that first we have this um, sensing capability and then we actually reason about it with some sort of AI logic and we use that in order to change what the motor commands to the wheels would be. And a high-tech solution isn't always the right solution. Lots of times patients don't want to give up their control. Um, so sometimes the existing tools that we have are actually the right solution or pieces of them. And so that's really why in my lab we're taking the approach of adding in automation selectively, not just trying to make a wheelchair that is a mobile robot, but instead allowing the patient to opt into and out of different modes of automation and even adjust the automation using ma machine learning techniques.